further ado, Chris, if you are uh, good to go, let's uh, move over to you and uh, get going. Okay, so yeah, th thanks, John. Um, I'm, I'm definitely going to start this off by saying I'm not sure what happened to Daniel, and he had a presentation ready to go that I was going to supplement at the end. Um, luckily, he has sent me his slides. So I do have his slides and I will read his notes. Uh, I've never read that before. So I just want to make sure we have a bit of a caveat <laughs> ahead of time here. But uh, yeah, thank you for inviting me. My name is Chris Duncan. Um, I am the acting uh, procurement and outreach team lead for the Western region of Procurement Assistance Canada. And I'm located in Medicine Hat. And, uh, you know, being in Medicine Hat, I'd just like to acknowledge that Southern Alberta is situated on Treaty 7 and Treaty 4 territory. The traditional lands of the Siksika, Kainai, Pekani, Stony Nakoda, and Sutina, as well as the Cree, Sioux, and Soto bands of the Ojibwa people. And with that in mind, you know, our region in the Western region, as, of, as you're going to see in our, in our map, is massive. It's definitely the biggest geographical region for Procurement Assistance Canada. And, and as such, um, you know, we recognize the, the different uh, Indigenous peoples whose, whose land we're a part of. So I just want to start with that, and I will start sharing my screen here. So just let me know as soon as we can see it, if I can get some sort of thumbs up or someone say it's there. Yeah, be... you're good to go. Perfect. So as I mentioned, this is going to be my first time reading through it. Luckily, pack information is generally the same. Uh, across Canada. So while it's my first time reading it, it's not going to be my first time talking about it. Um, there will be potentially some things about the Pacific region specifically uh, that I might not be able to get through quite as easily as, as I normally would. So bear with me, we'll, uh, we'll do the best we can. So Procurement Assistance Canada and our mandate. So Procurement Assistance Canada was created as part of Public Service and Procurement Canada to support smaller and diverse businesses in the federal procurement process. And our role is to engage with businesses to assist and inform them on how to sell their goods and services to the government of Canada and to work to reduce procurement barriers in an effort to ensure fairness in the process. We also look for opportunities to increase the participation of diverse businesses in federal procurement. And we do this by listening to concerns, answering questions, helping businesses understand the procurement process, and helping them identify opportunities. We also like to partner with community organizations and offer assistance that's tailored specifically to business needs. So the PSPC uh, Indigenous Procurement uh, Priorities, so Procurement Assistance, oh, sorry, got to change the notes here. Procurement Assistance Canada is supporting PSPC and the Government of Canada in reaching the minimum 5% Indigenous procurement targets. How exactly is Procurement Assistance Canada supporting the department in general? Let's take a look. So we have a number of federal procurement websites. Um, you're able to search the government, the government Electronic Tendering Services, or GETS, for public sector tenders and contract history, and to register for the Electronic Procurement Solution. Canada Buys is the single window for businesses to view bidding opportunities across the federal, provincial, territorial, and municipal governments, as well as administrative institutions, schools, hospitals, and that general match sector. You'll see many of the tender opportunities that require electronic bidding. These opportunities will deal, will, sorry, will direct you to register for SAP Ariva account access in order to uh, register for that electronic procurement solution through Canada Buys. You can register for free to view details and to bid online. And once registered, you can use the same login to view and to bid on tenders that require electronic bidding. Over time, more and more of these opportunities will actually be processed through this electronic bidding solution. You can complete your business profile on SAP Ariba and provide as much information you can about your business, including what commodities you sell and the socioeconomic profile of your business. This helps buyers identify your business as a potential supplier and you may benefit from procurement initiatives such as PSIB that aim to increase flyer diversity. Uh, buy and sell.gc.ca for any of those who are, are familiar with that. Um, that is our older system where we used to have our procurement opportunities. However, it still does have uh, a number of uh, pages on information about procurement, including how to register as, supply, as a supplier, 
some procurement policies and guidelines and you know some key contacts in departments and agencies. Just keep in mind that the information that you can find on the buy and sell website website will slowly be migrated over to the Canada Buys website. When you get a chance to actually take a look at the website, it's going to look something like this. So the Government Electronic Exchange Service, um, this is where you're going to, uh, this is what you should rely on in order to find Government of Canada's tenders. Uh, the federal departments and agencies do use GETs to advertise their requirements that are subject to trade agreements. This is where you're going to find the opportunities that are part of PSIB, and we'll use it for an additional, any additional uh, diverse supplier requirements as well. Um, just so, so folks know, um, if you are interested in the uh, defense construction world, um, DCC, Defense Construction Canada, doesn't actually use this website. Um, they do have a, a separate website, but they are uh, slowly migrating some of their stuff over here as well. Some of the other um, things that PAC does, so we have a three-tier ap approach to our direct outreach and engagement activities. Uh, awareness events that are, are what we consider the trade shows and conferences, where we're going to exchange some more basic information with, with potential suppliers and get them interested in joining us for a seminar or a webinar, which are part of what we've called uh, education events. Education events focus more on topics on how to deal, do business with the Government of Canada, how to bid on opportunities, how to find different opportunities, and so on. And finally, the third tier, and probably my favorite, um, are the assistance events, which are more personalized and tailored to support suppliers through uh, meetings like one-on-ones, where I'm going to get an opportunity to learn about your business, find out what your goals are, try to find out exactly what it is that you're looking for and, and try to find some tailored assistance to help you. So PAC Pacific, now this is obviously uh, a little bit out of my wheelhouse, but I will do my best. So um, this slide provides you with some information on some of the activities that PAC Pacific has been involved in. So currently they're organizing the B BC Links to Learning event with Candu for the month of December. Um, PAC is, is slated to provide a full day of presentations workshops, panel sessions, and all around the, the federal procurement theme. PAC Pacific Region is also involved in strategic partnership initiatives, or SPI for short. And the department doesn't have grants or, or contribution authorities. So they're using Indigenous Services Canada's mechanisms in order to work on projects with Indigenous organization, organizations, such as CANDU and FNBDA, who will share details about the projects in their respective presentations. We're interested in knowing more about upcoming procurement opportunities that can be shared within the Indigenous business community as well. So look forward for some information on that. Can do procurement training. Uh, okay, Chris, while, while you're reading that, uh, first of all, <laughs> what a fantastic job. So John here really Thank quickly, you. I kind of felt like I was watching the last waltz where uh, Eric Clapton lost his guitar strap and Robbie Robertson stepped in and then just, you know, knocked the solo right out of the park. Uh, I know, I know, I know Daniel's coming back in, but I yep. also know that Tim Lowe is online. Uh, Tim, I don't know if you wanted Perfect. to talk a little bit about what we're doing here or Daniel, but be, be, before we uh, move back towards Chris and the phenomenal job he's doing right now but uh daniel let me know if you're in and you're able to do that or tim if you'd like to talk a little bit about some of the uh uh the, the work we're doing no i'm back and okay, thank you chris go. and thank you chris for taking over you if bet you all can leave my screen going and you can read the notes you just tell me when to go to the next so i'm um, uh so what else is PAC doing for with Indigenous uh, Economic Development Officers or Indigenous businesses on how do we support uh, the transfer of knowledge or sharing of knowledge uh, on how to do business with the Government of Canada? So since the summer 2020, uh, CANDU and Procurement Assistance Canada have been working together in uh, creating a procurement-focused uh, mentorship program that focuses on the federal procurement uh, cycle. How how does the federal procurement cycle work? Like, what do I need to know to be successful in bidding? How What do I need to know for low dollar contracts? How does that work? So that's what we were looking at uh, in the summer of 2020 and have kept uh, refining the mentorship program over the next three years. So right now we're on the version number three. We have now cohorts in uh, 
Ontario and in uh, Atlantic region of Canada are going on and they will be uh, closing out nothing next week. And then for next spring, again, we will start with uh, courts in Alberta and uh, in uh, BC region. So what do, can you expect from the mentorship program? So uh, in the first meeting out of 10, we will be meeting and uh, introducing each other so that we all get to know each other. We were also looking at what is procurement? What does procurement mean? And in the uh, second session, we will be looking at the indigenous uh, procurement strategy. How does that work? Because it's really important that you know that early on, because that's a common thread which you will be seeing during the whole procurement cycle. In the third session, we will be looking how does the government do business? How does it work? What do I need? What do I need to know? And the third, uh, the fourth session, we'll be looking on how to find opportunities now in Canada buys. We're looking what is an RFP? How does an RFP look like? How does it work? And an RFI, what's an RFI? A request for information. How does that work? And why is the government also publishing RFIs? In the next session, we'll be looking on how to prepare your bid response to one of the tenders you have seen. What do you need to pay attention, attention to? What are some key parts to focus on for you to know, should I spend the time in replying to that proposal, to that tender opportunity? And then in the next session, we'll be looking on how to submit your tender opportunity. And then actually, how does the government evaluate my bid? What do I need to know about how the government is evaluating the bid? What are the criteria for a bid evaluation? Because that's important for you to know so you can write uh, your bid accordingly. And then in the next session, we will actually place you in the shoe of being the government officer who will be doing a bid evaluation so that you you're once on the other side and you see how that works so that you get to know the mechanics behind that. And then what happens if you win a contract? What, what's the contract management look like? What do you need to do when you commit to, now you won the bit, now you have to commit and fulfill the contract. And the 10th session is about the wrap up. Like there we are responding to open questions, but all during the whole program, I encourage you to also ask uh, the facilitators, the pack participants who are there, to get a go and approach them with your questions. Don't wait until the end of the procurement uh, of the procurement mentorship. Approach them, ask them for one-on-ones. That's what we're here for. Uh, next slide, please. So what can you expect as a learning object? What are the learning ob objectives? What can you expect from the mentorship program? Hopefully you will get a greater understanding of uh, the methods on how to find opportunities. You will have a strong awareness on how the government buys. You will also get a strong awareness what support the government has in place for you that you can access. You will also get an, a better understanding of the procurement training, research tools for businesses. You will get a greater understanding of the government's procurement website, like Canada Buys. How does Canada Buys work? What, what are the mechanics? What can I see? What can I find? What information is, is on Canada Buy? And you will hopefully have also a greater understanding of the different tools the government uses, like an RFP, an RFI, an RQ. And you will uh, have knowledge on the types of supplier relationships. You will know on how the difference between what the government calls a low dollar procurement versus a tendered procurement. And for one, like if you're focusing on the low dollar procurement, that it asks you as a supplier more effort upfront because you are the one who initiates the first step to get in touch with government to try to sell your products or services. Whereas with uh, the tender uh, process, you need to wait for the government to publish the, the tender process to go and bid on it. On the next slide, you will see my, my contact information. 
And I encourage you, get in touch with me, get in touch with Chris, get in touch with Daisy, get in touch with, uh, with the regional offices. If you don't know someone in a regional office in your region, we are all happy to connect you with our colleagues in your respective region. Next slide, please. Like here you can see all our six regional offices and I would encourage you to get in touch with them, ask them your questions about procurement. The only thing we are not allowed to do is to talk about an open procurement that you may find on uh, Canada Vice. We are not allowed to talk to, to you about them. The only people who are allowed to talk to you about an open procurement are the people who are named uh, in Canada Vice as the contact person. But we're happy to talk to you about how procurement works, about the different procurement tools that the government uses, about the strategy for Indigenous businesses, Whatever your question may be, get in touch with us. And now I hand it over to Chris, who has very exciting news about what's going on in the Western region. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Daniel. So let me just take a second here to switch over to my slides about what we're doing in the Western region and give you some, some tips on where you can find us. Here we go. These slides I have seen before, so hopefully I can get through these pretty easily. So uh, again, uh, my name is Chris, uh, Western Region. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is actually go back to Daniel's slide. Uh, I, I stole it from my presentation as well and come back to this one. So as I mentioned kind of early on, you can really see the Western Region Procurement Assistance Canada group. We are the largest geographical group for Procurement Assistance Canada. And as such, you're gonna find us kind of all over the place. So. We do have outreach officers in uh, Edmonton, Saskatoon, myself in uh, Medicine Hat. We've got folks in Winnipeg. We've got additional resources in Calgary and some more folks in Yellowknife as well. So there are Procurement Assistance Canada people everywhere and, and hopefully our, our group grows a little bit larger. Um, I did happen to see in the, uh, in the participant list today, there's a couple of our resources, both past and present are here today. So. Hello, Scott. Hello, Joe. I see you out there. Um, for our, our events, you know, um, like I said, we, we do events everywhere. And I really have to thank Daniel and his slides for, for showing, you know, exactly what it is that PAC does, but for highlighting that we're here to talk to you. So when you get an opportunity to meet with us, come chat with us, don't be shy. Please come up and, and talk to us and, and find out, you know, what it is that we can do for you how we can work together and, and meet some of your procurement goals. Here's a list of some of the uh, Indigenous focused events that we are hosting in the Western region with Procurement Assistance Canada. So we do have an event coming up in Yellowknife in 2024, uh, in February, sorry, uh, another one uh, tentatively scheduled in, in March in Regina. Um, and again, we had a really fantastic event uh, earlier this year in both Winnipeg and one in Calgary as well. Um, and we're hoping to build on those. Uh, so you're going to find some of those events be become um, a little more regular than just the, the annual event or at least an annual event, okay? We do attend other events as well in the Western region that are uh, non pac hosted events. So please, you're going to see our booth here. You're gonna see people walking around with our name tags. Come and talk to us. We are outreach. We're here to talk to folks. We're here to find out what's stopping people from bidding where they are in their journey, what help we can provide, what answers we can give to them, okay? If you've also got an event coming up and you think it would be important to have someone from PAC attend, reach out and talk to us, you know, ask us, see if there's something we can do, whether in person or virtually, we're happy to have folks come and attend as many events as we possibly can, okay? So with that in mind, and you know, after all the information from Daniel and, and from myself, I did wanna take a couple of slides just to show um, some of the myths around federal procurement that PAC is interested in busting. So I'm, I'm going to just switch over, first of all, to the biggest myth, I think personally that I run into when I talk with folks about federal procurement, and that is that companies feel that they're too small to compete, okay? And if you're talking about, you know, some of the big ticket items out there, like fighter jets and, you know, ships and things like that, you might be right. I can't go down to the corner store and buy a, a, buy a fighter jet, just not going to happen. But in reality, like uh, Anne-Marie said with this, a lot of the contracts that we uh, award with the federal government are actually valued under $25,000. 
And almost all of those credit card purchases that she mentioned are under $10,000. So those are right in the wheelhouse for, for the smaller, uh, smaller and medium-sized businesses out there. And that is actually where the majority of our contracts come from. Okay. Um, the second myth that I like to talk about is that uh, companies seem to feel that we don't buy what they sell. And in a lot of cases, that's just not, not the truth. Um, in reality, yes, of course, like I said, fighter jets, ships, computers, software, office supplies. We buy, as the federal government, we buy such a huge list of uh, goods and services every year. We buy food, we buy training services, exercise equipment, plumbing supplies, golf carts, bicycles, uh, snow removal equipment. We buy, uh, we just wrote a contract for um, firewood, right? Horseback riding, skiing, we do contracts for literally everything. So if you have a small business or you know of a small business out there and they have a unique product, there is an there could potentially be an opportunity with the federal government for us to purchase those goods and services. So don't be shy. Come and talk to us. Find out, you know, if we can find some opportunities, network you with the right people, any of that sort of thing. That's exactly what PAC is here to do. So with that in mind, I just want to put up my contact info. Uh, I do have a QR code there. If you've got your cell phone handy and you want to scan it, uh, it's there for you to use. Please reach out and chat with me. Doesn't even have to just be the Western region. Uh, as Daniel mentioned, happy to, to help you out and you know refer you to the right folks in your region as well. Don't be shy. I, I love getting uh, emails and responding to businesses, setting up those one-on-ones, uh, just really great stuff. So with that, that's the end of the, uh, the PAC presentation. I will throw it back over to John. Amazing. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much to both of you for uh, that presentation. And uh, my God, you work magic with a couple of uh, uh, issues with that. And uh, we really appreciate you coming through. I love the QR code. That's incredible. Um, also, for everyone uh, on on the uh, session today, one of the things and 